Welcome back to CSM Today. With this uh, segment, we have a different person to be interviewed. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Morgan Klein. I was the scenic artist and mm -hmm. part of the makeup design team. So what is a uh, scenic artist? I don't think I've heard that before. I take the designs given to me by the TD, by Keith Height. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, I take his designs, I make them into reality. I pick the paint colors. We actually use projection screens. So we'll take a picture that we find online or one that we kind of create ourselves mm -hmm. or with the graphics department, and we'll project it across a few flats. We did four at a time. Uh, we would take it, trace it out with a Sharpie, and then color it in, usually a color by number. This, this part needs to be black. Okay, give him the yeah, black, give yeah. her the green. And after we get all of the basics done, we have to go back and refine, do some texturing. We use sponges, smaller brushes, larger brushes, rollers. Um, a lot of different, anything that we could find we would mm -hmm. use. We've used paper plates. <laughs> It was more about making whatever Keith wanted happen, mm -hmm. which is difficult <laughs> when you have to make two of the exact same set and then six others that are six total, I believe, that were just very large, very animated, and very detailed. And this was all for Pinocchio, then? All for Pinocchio. So what, what was like involved in the production, like specifically? Why did you need two sets? We actually had eight pteriactoids, which are triangles that spin. I helped build those, and those are just three flats put together with wheels on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Those we would take and we would spin them to make each scene. So one set was four, the other set was four on each side of the stage. Each actor was assigned a pteriactoid. Oh. So we had to make it so that they could turn it and spin it into the next scene, into a picture easily. And that became something that required us to get all of our line work perfect, which is hard when you have a projection that's very fuzzy. <laughs> but the main thing that happened going into that was trying to get all the paint colors correct mm -hmm. and trying to make it so that Keith would like it. We ended up in the village scene. It was supposed to be all houses. We ended up covering up a house with a forest because it was not <laughs> drawn well. <laughs> well, that's an easy fix to a little mistake, I guess. So what, um, I didn't catch many, much of, so you had, you were creating these, uh, these different kinds of sets that actors would push around and stuff. Um, what else did you do as like a scenic artist? Because it sounds like Keith was, uh, your, your director that is, um, was just kind of uh, like he telling you what us, to do like on the fly. He gave us a picture and he said, make this. Oh. So we would get the picture <laughs> in an email and we would set it up on mm -hmm. the projection screen against a wall of the pteriactoid. Yeah. So once we got that picture copied down, got that picture colored in, we'd have to change it and make it a little bit better, make it suit Pinocchio, pick out the colors and get a color scheme going. With the turquoise fairy's house, which is one of the sets we had, was very, very bright. The entire thing was bright colors, a lot of Easter scenes. And then you have the forest, which is the dark forest, which we had to use darker colors for, that we ran out of, that we had to make more of. <laughs> and Geppetto's house, it was more creating the different moods that needed to be created, mm -hmm. reflecting the poorness of Geppetto, the happiness in the fairy, uh, trying to make sure the forest looked as scary as the lighting design and the characters mm -hmm. would. Yeah, so uh, how long did all that take, just making all those different kinds of set pieces? I want to say it took us a month of steady painting. Oh my goodness. I would come in <laughs> uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays was our class period that we would do stage production. So I'd be able to work then, usually working until 6 or 7. And PM. then we would come in on weekends here and there, work on it some here and there. Fridays we would come in. I think I came in one or two Mondays or Wednesdays, but I tried to take days off. But it was <laughs> pretty good. steady work. Yeah, that sounds really, really difficult. Like, it's good that you managed to get it all done by, th by the time the, uh, the play started. We were painting the day of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, so you also, ha uh, that's not your only job that you had to do um, no. during the play. Uh, you said you were a makeup artist. What, what was that entail? I had a makeup designer who was a good friend of mine, Emma Carpenter, mm -hmm. and she made these beautiful puppet faces and then realized we had exactly five minutes to put them on 12 different girls. <laughs> so we had to <laughs> cut them down, figure out how to make the makeup simple enough and make it still reflect that they were puppets. So we would do woodwork on their chins and then give them lips in the beginning. As when they came back from their scene where they had to be village people because they all had to be village people, mm -hmm. we would do their faces and they all were supposed to represent things like rap, gluttony, vanity, just different things that were pretty well-known themes yeah. that Pinocchio was experiencing. Mm -hmm. So you, like for these, these children had to come in all the time, you just kind of 
did it bit by bit as they had time. They would come in and they would get their lips, some of them would get their eyebrows done before the show started and then during the show they would all come back. <laughs> and and uh, what, kind of, what was that process like? Like how many people did you have working with you and was, we it, had, was it stressful? We had a variation of five to six people depending on who could be there and who couldn't. We oh, had a lot of okay. different issues that were conflicting in personal lives but overall it ended up getting done very fast because yeah. it was just eyes, lips, sometimes blush. And mm. then the harder parts were Geppetto with the old age makeup and Pinocchio. And one of the, one of our puppets, Harlequin, needed a full face of diamonds. So that was fun. <laughs> well, it's, it's good that you managed to get all of that done in, during the, the production. I mean, you, you found a solution that mm -hmm. worked for you, it sounded yeah. like. Uh, anything else about like Pinocchio that you think is noteworthy to talk about in your job? Pinocchio, one of my bigger things that I do with Keith is that I try to help him see his concepts yeah. and I try to help him tell the children what he wants his concepts to be. <laughs> and child wrangle is one of the things I've done for many mm -hmm. shows for him. So trying to make sure the kids are okay. We had a few incidents where the kids got emotional. Oh. So I'd have to go and calm them down, yeah. work with them. We had siblings in there, so sibling fights were always fun. Oof. Trying to get costumes organized. I did a little bit of everything. It sound, yeah, it sounds like it'd be every woman, like uh, <laughs> liaison to the director, getting the sets produced, like makeup during the show. I keep people out of Keith's hair and try to limit the, the interaction with the stage manager as much as I can. <laughs> well, uh, I, it sounds like you did a good job of it, so congratulations. Thank you. Uh, are, you working on any, uh, are you working on any other productions in the future? I am working on, currently I'm working on the Nutcracker Ballet, which mm -hmm. is for Studio Cooperative and Outside Company, and oh, then another okay. Nutcracker that's happening in Baltimore. Oh, wow. So those two are going out this week. Mm -hmm. The Nutcracker will be Saturday. I think this Saturday is the Nutcracker Ballet at North Point. Mm -hmm. And then we are setting up for Blood Relations, Wrinkle in Time, and beginning to look at a concept for Nine Parts of Desire. Mm -hmm. So the Amish and Library are smaller sets, which is really, really nice. <laughs> those I will be imagine. up in January. <laughs> Blood Relations is a full set, which is up in February, and I think Wrinkle in Time is actually before Amish and Library. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you certainly have your work cut out for you. Well, uh, good luck on making those work, and thank you so much for coming in. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, tune in next time for another edition of CSM Today.